Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to paint a backhoe loader. This is the fourth painting in this set. So please make sure to also check out the other three videos if you like this one. The first step is always finding a good reference photo that you can use for your line drawing. The reference photo is just a source of visual information, so I do not copy the exact picture and I'm not using all the little details that are in the photo. Let's start by pre-selecting and mixing the colors. I'm using lemon yellow, cadmium red, I'm using a light green and of course I'm using lamp black. In order to paint the glass for the other three pictures, I mix some of the black with a hint of green and I will continue to use this mix for this painting as well. In order to make the red color really shine, I'm mixing in some of the lemon yellow. And of course, I'm testing my color on a spare sheet of paper over and over again to make sure that I get a really great shiny mix. I'm pre-mixing a larger amount of this color to make sure that I do have enough to use for the entire painting. I want a very cohesive painting, which means I don't want the mix to change throughout the painting. It also makes it easier and faster to paint if your colors are pre-mixed. First, let's paint in the windows. I pre-wetten that area of the watercolor paper because it gives me a greater time to work on it. The water does not reach all the way to the pencil line because I will be closing that gap with the pigment filled brush. The pigment will just run towards the center into the wet area and the color towards the edge in the gap area will be more intense. This method also makes it easier to create a straight line. I will be helping the pigment to move around a little bit and I will intensify it in some areas. The last step is to drop in some water and let it disperse in the windows. It will push the pigment aside and that will cause really beautiful blooms. I'm using the same technique to color in the tires. Having some movement and blooms in the watercolor and not having an even mix all over the tire will make it look more interesting. When you do this, please avoid puddles. You can use a paper towel or a dry brush to dry off some of the puddles. Also, you can always turn your page. It's sometimes easier to paint a straight line when you turn your page a certain way. That is why I didn't tape it down to the table. It just makes it easier to turn it and it makes it easier for me to paint on it. I'm not working with a lot of water, meaning I don't wetten a larger area of the page at a time, so I'm not worried about bulging or any of the puddles that could be forming when you don't tape it down. So it's perfectly fine to not tape it down on the page or on the table. Let's work on the bucket next. I am for now ignoring the pencil line that I draw straight across the bucket. It will still be visible later on once this is dry and I'm going to use that to add a second coat to the bucket later once it's completely dry. The other reason why I do pre-wet some areas is simply because I want to avoid hard edges. I do not want any lines in those areas like randomly all around. But some areas are so small that I really don't need to pre-wet them in order to avoid hard edges. I'm also coloring in some of the smaller areas. Once all your grays are on the page and dry, it's easier to estimate how much pigment you need when you color in the reds. That's why I start by coloring in all the gray areas first. And in order to intensify some areas, I just drop in some more pigment towards the edges and let it bleed towards the center. It's causing really cool patterns. If you want to clean up some lines, just let it dry completely and go in with a moist brush. You can loosen some of the pigment and just soak it up with a paper towel. This does not always work 100% because some pigments do stay in the page, 
but it works pretty well for this gray. Well, we can also use the time to color in some of the smaller parts. They will be drying pretty quickly. And remember, creating straight lines is sometimes easier if you just turn your whole page. When coloring in a larger area like this, I work in sections. I do pre-wet the entire area, but I leave a little gap towards the pencil line, like I did for the other parts at the beginning. And then I drop in some watercolor. I make sure that the area that I'm working on looks really nice and really well, and then I'm absolutely done painting it, and then I move on to the next section. It's just easier and it helps you to prevent hard edges in random places. If you want to drop in some more pigment or some more water, make sure that your watercolor is still wet. If it's not, just wait for it to dry completely and add another layer. Let's move on to the red watercolor. I pre-wetten the segment and then I close the gap between the waterline and the pencil line with my paint filled brush. I let the water bleed towards the center of the wet area. I can help the pigment move. The most important thing here is to have a large color variation in each part. So I let the white shine through, especially in the center of each part. This just makes the whole painting look more interesting and less monotone. An even wash would not really pop. Having this large color variation makes the whole painting pop. Especially since there is a really large contrast with the black and gray watercolor I added earlier. If you're afraid that you might touch a wet area, you can always give it a few minutes to dry. It is important that you alterate and make sure that you do not paint a wet area which touches an area that is still wet. This will cause bleeding and you can't really control that. Even though those watercolor bleeds look really cool, for example in loose florals, it is not what I'm going for with this painting. In order to intensify a certain area, you can always go back in with a really pigment filled brush as long as that area is still wet. Since this is a kid's painting, I'm not considering any of the shadows. If you like, you can for example paint the lower areas that would be in the shade more intense, but that's not really the point here in this painting, at least for me. Since some of the objects are round, it's easier for the eye to see that they are round if the sides of it are more intense, like darker. They would not be hit by light as much and it just makes it easier for the eye to see that those objects are round. For the smaller red parts here, I decided that my color variation is really large, so I want the center to be white. And that's easier to achieve by letting the color bleed towards the center. It would be harder to achieve this once you would drop down some pigment and then cause some blooms because the red watercolor would stay in the center of the page and the white areas would not be truly white. The pigment you are using might be different, so just give it a try. And some areas, like the tires here, I want them to be really intense, so there is no white area in the center of it. For the siren, I dropped down a light wash of lemon yellow and then I filled my brush with some of the red pigment and just dropped down a few splatters of those. It just makes the siren shine a lot and it just makes it pop off the page even more. But at the same time, this is not a different color I'm introducing here to the painting, so it looks cohesive. 
All the red areas dried pretty quick, so I can now move on to the body of my vehicle. As before, I'm working in sections. I wetten the entire area and then I'm working my way around the body, painting one section at a time. If an area happens to be too dry, by the time I get around to it, I just pre-wetten it with clear water again. I want this part of my vehicle look really busy and just really interesting. So I'm dropping down some more intense pigments in some area and I'm also dropping in some water in some areas. And now let's move on to painting in the other parts. I want this painting to look visually really interesting, so I'm using slightly different techniques for every part of it. And I'm just having so much fun with this. Every part gets a wash that's unique to this very part. And some areas do have really intense wash and others have a light wash and not a lot of pigment in it. It just makes it look more interesting. Like you can see here, I sometimes need to make sure that a part of this vehicle is offset enough from the rest of it. So I leave a white gap between this part and the body of the vehicle. It is important for the eye to easily catch that this is a different part. I still did pre-wetten this entire area and I just let the pigment bleed towards the other side of it. But by controlling how much pigment I have in my brush, I can ensure that there is a larger color variation. The next step in this painting process is to add a second layer of pigment to some of the areas. It helps to offset the color and it does intensify the pigment in that certain area. This gives you the opportunity to define certain areas without introducing another color. In order to do this, the first layer of watercolor needs to be completely dry. I'm using the pencil lines that I just painted over earlier. They are my guideline for where I can add a second layer of pigment to offset some of those areas. I can also start adding some details, like the screws and bolts at the vehicle. Those details will make the whole painting look really rich and really interesting. It's a kid's painting, so we want this painting to really pop and really look visually interesting. The second layer I'm adding right now, for the most part, it's a pretty even wash. I do not want the second layer to look too crowded or too intense or have too much color variation. If I would use something like blooms in the second layer here, it would not be offset from the first layer of pigment as much and therefore it would not pop as much. So I'm sticking with a mostly even wash. It would also take attention away from those beautiful blooms that we worked on earlier. But sometimes, like right here, I'm painting in larger areas and it's definitely worth it to add some blooms and some color variations and some bleeds to those areas. I want this painting to match the rest of the set, so I'm using some tricks to make it match. For example, the the tires of all the vehicles, they are painted using the same method and I'm using, I'm painting in those knobs the same way for all of the set. I'm also painting in all the screws the same way, it's just little black dots, but it will make the whole set look matching and it will fit together. It's easy to get lost in adding too much detail at this point. So I try my best to just stick to the original line drawing and not add more than the line drawing initially indicated. If you liked my video, please leave me a comment. Please like the video, please subscribe to my channel and I will see you soon with another video.